Hi, my name is Vladimir and in this tutorial I will show you how to upgrade your Mac Mini's hard drive to an SSD. In this tutorial we will go through the step-by-step -step procedure of upgrading the internal hard drive of the Mac Mini with this Patriot Place 240GB SSD drive. For the procedure you will also need a special Torx star-shaped screwdriver that has a hole in the middle as the screws are security Torx screws. The exact name of the screwdriver is T6H Security Torx Screwdriver. To begin, you will first need to open the cover of the Mac Mini. The space between the Mac Mini and the cover is the air intake. We can use a special tool to open it or do it old school. Just don't use any sharp objects in order not to damage it. The cover snaps on on three protruding screws. And here we have the Wi-Fi. Using the special T6H security torque screwdriver, we will need to remove all six screws. Be careful when lifting the cover, as the Wi-Fi is still connected to the logic board. Gently lay the cover on the side and use the T6H screwdriver to remove the screw holding down the cable. Once you remove the screw, gently pull up on the cable to remove it from the logic board. This will allow us to remove the metal cover. To get to the hard drive, next we will need to remove the heatsink. To do this, we unscrew the three screws holding it to the logic board. The third screw is a longer screw that also goes through the logic board and secures it to the bracket below. Gently lift up the heatsink and lift up the wire to remove it from the socket. You will only need to gently pull up and the wire comes out immediately from the socket. Next, we will remove the screw holding the cable from the hard drive. There is also another long screw that holds the logic board in place. We will remove this one as well. Gently lift up the cable from the hard drive to remove it from the socket and it should come right off. You will also need to remove the cable next to it. This one is a little bit tricky so you might need to use a small screwdriver. You will only need to gently pull up in order for the cable to come out from the socket. These small cables can be very fragile, so don't use any force to remove it. Next come the scariest and the most difficult part, which is to remove the logic board from the socket. I used two small screwdrivers to achieve this. They must be small enough to go through the specific holes in the logic board and firmly touch the sockets below. Now at the same time pull both screwdrivers at an angle of 30 degrees towards you. Make sure that the screwdrivers are in the exact holes and that they are touching the bottom lid below. Pull them gently towards you and the logic board should pop out of place. Now slowly pull the logic board from both sides towards you. Don't pull too fast because the power cable is still attached. You will need to remove this by pulling on the cable in the opposite direction of the logic board. Once the power cable is removed, you can remove the logic board completely. This is it. This is your entire Mac Mini. Amazing, isn't it? Next we will need to remove the screw holding the power supply. The power jack is held down by a small metal bracket. We will need to remove this. Simply pull it to the side and the bracket comes right off. Now this next part is a bit tricky. After you remove the metal bracket, you will need to turn the power jack 90 degrees to the left in order to remove the power supply. Now finally we come to the hard drive. There is one more screw holding the hard drive bracket. After we remove it, we can pull out the bracket holding the hard drive. The hard drive is held to the bracket by four screws. We will need to remove these. Be careful when removing the hard drive as the cable is still there. You will first need to remove the metal cover and then you will need to pull the cable through the hole. The connectors are held by a tape stick to the hard drive. You will gently need to remove this tape as we will need to use it again later on. Now the time has come to open up the SSD. The SSD is a bit thinner than the hard drive. Now we don't really need to do this, but just in case we want to use them some other time or just because they are made from maple, we will remove the pads from the hard drive and apply them on the SSD. Next we take back the connector with the tape that we have removed earlier from the hard drive and we will connect it to the SSD. 
Make sure the connectors are all the way in to the SSD before you cover the tape and before you put it back to the bracket. Put all four screws back and make sure you thread the connection cable through the hole. After the bracket is ready, it's time to bring back the Mac Mini chassis. Put the hard drive bracket back inside, the same way as you pulled it out. Position it correctly and put back the screw to hold down the bracket. Next, we need to bring back the power supply. Gently push it down until it gets back into its original position. Now the hard part is to turn back the jack 90 degrees to the right as it was previously. Put back the screw to hold down the power supply and make sure to adjust the power jack back to its original position before you put back the metal bracket. The metal bracket will slide back in easy if the jack is in the right position. Now it's time to bring back the logic board. Carefully slide in the logic board back to its original position, but don't push it all the way down. You will first need to connect back the power cable. After the power cable is connected, hold the logic board from the both sides and push it gently back into its socket. Make sure all the pads and the metals are back safely inside and nothing protrudes out. The logic board should snap back in place easily and you should not use too much force. Next, we will return one of the long screws and we will put back the connection cables back to their socket. You only need to press down on the cable and it snaps back into the socket. You will need to do the same with the data cable from the hard drive. Don't forget to add back the metal cover also. Now screw back the metal cover so it will hold the data cable in place. After you finish putting back all the screws, it's time for the heatsink. Make sure you position the heatsink back to its original position, with the long screw on the lower right. Before you proceed with the screws, snap back in the cable from the heatsink. You will only need to press down on the cable in order to put it back in the socket. And now it's time to put back the three screws of the heatsink. We've come to the final part, we will need to replace back the metal cover. First, put back the screw to hold the cable and put the cable back into the socket. You only need to press down gently and the cable snaps back into socket. If needed, tighten down the screw a little to hold on the cable and it's time to replace the metal cover. Make sure you tuck back the cable inside so it doesn't get caught on the screws. Position the metal cover so that all the holes align perfectly and the Wi-Fi is on the top. Put one of the short screws to hold it in place. If you don't remember where the higher screws go, here is a little tip. You can use the plastic cover to see where to put the higher screws. One goes at the bottom and the other two go to the upper left and upper right side. Put back the two remaining screws and make sure all the screws are tightened. Finally, it's time to put back the plastic cover. Align it so that the three higher screws go inside the three sockets of the plastic cover. Gently push it down and it should snap back into place. That's it! You have just upgraded your Mac Mini with an SSD drive. I hope you find this tutorial useful and thank you for watching.